Um, <laughs> over recent years, psychedelic drugs like uh, LSD have been used in clinical trials to treat mental illness. But despite some encouraging results, Australia is yet to get involved. This is what psychedelic drug testing looked like in the 50s. This glass of water contains 100 gamma of LSD. It's here. Can't you feel it? Oh, it's just like... Like you're released or you're freed, I am one with what I am. But after a culture of abuse and a war on drugs, research slowed. That is until a few decades ago, when scientific investigation into their effects had a renaissance. And while the USA, UK, Canada, Israel, Switzerland, Brazil, the Czech Republic and New Zealand have current programs underway... Australia is not engaged in this research. So today, some Australian psychologists are calling for us to expand our thinking. What we're calling for is for Australia to be begin research into the potential therapeutic benefits of psychedelic assisted psychotherapies. Doses of LSD, magic mushrooms, ayahuasca or MDMA have been shown to reduce symptoms in a range of debilitating mental conditions such as depression, OCD, anxiety, PTSD, addiction and can provide peace of mind for people in palliative care. The AMA is reserving its judgement. If it's within well-controlled trials that have a meticulous look at safety, then we would support that. Show us the evidence. If it's safe and it's effective, doctors will support it. I'm certainly not suggesting that people go out and take LSD if they have depression. This research is being conducted in a controlled clinical environment with pharmaceutical grade drugs. So should Australian medical professionals take another look at the benefits of psychedelics? People are compassionate. They don't want to see Australians to continue to suffer when there are these potentially very effective therapies available. Steve McDonald served in the Australian Army for 15 years and in 2003 he was diagnosed with PTSD and later used the psychedelic drugs ayahuasca and MDMA to treat his condition. He is not a doctor but he is working closely with Dr Stephen Bright who we saw in that package to lobby for more clinical trials of psychedelic drugs in Australia and he's been good enough to join us now. So Steve, uh, just how bad did your PTSD get? At its worst, I had to stop work and I uh, really was dysfunctional. I was admitted to hospital for a few weeks. And so when you took uh, ayahuasca, how did that make you feel compared to, say, the legal treatments that were available? Um, it was remarkably different and uh, significantly more beneficial. First, it's important to understand that very often PTSD comes with depression, and in my case I had major depression, which means that I was having suicidal thoughts. So I had to be admitted to hospital. So probably three years after I actually had my breakdown was the first time I had a chance to try the psychedelic drug. But I discovered the day after that I felt a lot better, and uh, it really effectively treated the depression that I had been suffering. What do you say, Steve, to the naysayers, you know, parents who think you're just advocating drugs, people who don't understand, one, what it was like, the condition you had, and, and two, you know, how you're taking this drug and how you're using it in your life. Can you help people sort of get an understanding of that? Sure. Um, I think it's a complex situation because our drug laws aren't really science-based. Our laws have been drafted on the social values at the time they were created. And since then, a lot of science has been conducted in you know, looking at the safety and safe ways to use uh, some of these drugs as medicines. And we really have a lot of evidence now to say that, for example, the, the classic psychedelics are actually far, far safer than alcohol and tobacco. And what Stephen Bright and I are proposing is that they are made available as prescription medicines and administered by trained medical and health professionals. But we're not proposing you know, that they be made available to the general public uncontrolled at all. You're talking about changing legislation, Steve, but surely we're a long way from that. I mean, um, the science at this point doesn't really seem to be in to the point that the AMA is just saying they would support really well-controlled trials that have a meticulous look at safety and then they would look at evidence to see whether or not they would support it. So is there a danger here that we're kind of saying, hey, look, there's something here that's really great and really safe and people might go out and... I don't know, misunderstand the state of the science or, or even self-medicate and cause themselves some really serious problems? Look, I, I don't think so because we agree with what the AMA statement says. So we're collaborating with an American organisation called MAPS and the Food and Drug Administration in the US, which is their equivalent of our TGA, have just granted uh, one of these medicines, MDMA, breakthrough therapy status. They're on track to allow that as a prescription medicine by around 2021. And we now have the opportunity, if we can initiate some research here in Australia, 
to play catch up, riding on the back of their research. And uh, it will be done with, you know, very, very rigorous science in the same way that any other prescription medicine is, is tested and proven before it's introduced to the public. It'll be interesting to see uh, if and when the AMA's position on it shifts as the science rolls out. Steve, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Great. Thank you very much. Sandra Bates will be back with more of the projects after this.